Intel.IFL TV in association with MTG Global. With me, I've got none other than the trainer and head honcho from Team Fury, Mr. Peter Fury. How are you, Pete? Don't know about that, James, but yeah, I'm good, thanks. Yeah. Good, yeah. Let's talk a little bit about firstly what we witnessed today. Lenny Dawes, very unfortunate, coming up short for the EBU title against Antonio Yiji, a fight that Mick Hennessy's promoter really was willing him to win all the way through it. How did you first assess the fight? I think uh, if Lenny Dawes would have been up against anybody else tonight, he'd have come through it. I think what you're seeing tonight is a very special talent in the other guy. I think he's a world-class operator. You know, the way he was calm, going through the rounds, you know, never even had his mouth open, did he? You know, he was very relaxed, he knew exactly what he was doing. He's, um, when you get that kind of relaxedness in a fighter, on, on a European title fight as well, you, know, you can see that uh, he's a world-level operator. I think this kid, it's, you've seen something special you're going to win a world title. Lenny Dawes, I mean, two-time British champion, two-time EU title, title winner, three-time EBU challenger. Do you think at this stage in his career he can regroup and come again from this? It's all down to Lenny, you know. He's, um, you know, look, he, he hasn't took an eye in or anything. He's, he's, he's been involved in a competitive 12-round fight, but he's just come up against somebody who's an elite boxer. And um, you know it's unfortunate, but um, you know give that's the give Lenny all the respect in the world because uh, he's fought something special there this evening. I think this kid will be he'll be doing that to most of his other opponents as well. So it's, uh, if Lenny wants to come back, that's a decision for uh, Lenny. He's achieved a lot, hasn't he? Let's talk a little bit about your son and heir and protege, Yuri Fury. A lot's been spoke about regarding the Joseph Parker fight. Are we any closer to having a? A location or nailed on date? What, what's going on? Yeah, I spoke to. Uh, I've been speaking with Frank, Frank Warren, and um, also with Mick Hennessy as well. And uh, I think we're about. A, I think this week we'll have a decision and uh, what they're going to do. Mm -hmm. So maybe I think all this week they're sorted out. And next week they will announce the venue where it's going to be. At the moment it's in New Zealand because they won the first bits. So, uh, but that's not cast in stone. So that uh, that fight is up in the air at the moment. It's got to go wherever it makes business sense. What does your instinct say? What, what, what vibe are you getting? What, what, how do you feel that's going to play out? I haven't really got any vibes with it because um, at the moment, worst way it's going to be New Zealand. Um, we'd like it to be somewhere else where it all depends where it's going to make the most money, I suppose. Mm. And that's not really my, my end of it. Mm. So I understand that. We have to see. My job is getting you mentally focused for the biggest fight of your life. Mm. So uh, that's what I'll be doing. How is he in terms of preparation and being focused does, does he does he believe he's got the tools to go out and do a job on park on New Zealand regardless what people don't understand is he's always been working towards this this goal anyway so when you're a world-class fighter of course you look forward to a world title fight so we're silently confident that uh, you know we're going to see something special in Yui what we've not seen before uh, and I'm looking forward to it uh, Park is a good fighter and knew he needs to raise his game better than what he's done before. Um, like I said, it's going to be a good fight, one we're excited about and one we're coming to win. I think Lightning can strike twice and we can get another Fury hitting weight champion. I think Lightning uh, is a matter of time, it will strike. I think Yui will be a world champion. Whether it be this time or not, because anything can happen in boxing. But he's, uh, he's, on, the right, he's on the right track. And uh, if preparations go the way we want them to go, he should lift that belt. I know you've got a massive family, the Furies, but I want to talk about one Fury in particular. How is your giant nephew, none other than Tyson Fury? How is the big man? Yeah, he's good. Um, he's, he's, he's in a good place. He's, he's talking all the right things, and uh, I think he'll be back. Yeah. Do you think yeah. he's missing the sport and seeing these big fights being made? That we've seen Wilder will face uh, Gerald Washington. Pishko and Anthony Joshua obviously been made. Do you think that's wet, wet his taste buds a little bit? In fact, that it's enticing him to come back, seeing all this going on around him. I think he will come back. I think he, is, he, he will come back and he will get all of his, uh, or most of the belts back. So I just say it's a matter of time, really. He's had a bit of a blip in his life, but um, I think he's got to get his mind right himself. And I think once he's, once he's right, he'll come back and uh, do what he's got to do. People say a heavyweight doesn't get into his peak, into his prime, his real strength until he's sort of 32, 33 onwards. With Tyson Fury approaching 28? 
Coming up to 28? Uh, it's 28, yes. Coming up to 28, I mean, he could still be a devastating force in the heavyweight division two years to come, should he choose to do that. I think he still is. You know, look, he's not been beat, has he? He's 25 and 0, 18 knockouts, is it? Mm -hmm. You know, he done what nobody else could do over there in Germany. So I think uh, it's not like people talking about him, about him as a has been. He's going to come back and probably wipe the floor of whatever's around today. So that's my opinion of it, and um, I just I see that happening. It's just such a such a hard thing to deal with what Tyson's been through and so publicly sort of vilified as well. It must put a pressure and a toll on a man to have to deal with that much stress day in, day out. I think when you look at pressure, he's probably done the right thing by taking his foot off the gas and saying, oh, you know, let it get on, retiring, relinquishing the belts. Your mind's got to be right in this job. You have to be 100%. And if you're not, you shouldn't be dancing to anybody too. Do what your mind and your heart tells you yourself. You know, take stock, have a good think about it, because this is a gruelling sport. It's a very, very hard, requires 100% dedication. If your mind's drifting and there's something else playing on your mind, or you're not taking instructions properly, or there's some outside influence anywhere at all, it can be 2%, that can affect your performance tenfold under them lights. So you have to be totally dedicated, loving the sport, wanting it, and knowing what you you're going to achieve and you really want it. If that's not there, you shouldn't be doing it. When Tyson Fury fought Christian Hamer, people sort of undermined the credibility of Hamer as an opponent. We've obviously seen recently with the win over David Price that Hamer maybe is a lot better than people gave him credit for. I mean, did you happen to watch David Price's defeat to Christian Hamer? And sort of, if so, what, what are your thoughts on that, on the overall situation? I saw David Price's fight, and it's very sad um, to, to see. But you know, he should have never went in the same ring with their Hamer. You know, obviously, there's a lot of people who don't know boxing. Look, heavyweight boxing is unique. You need to know what you're talking about. It's different to all the other weights. And you know, I laughed, and I told my son Yui, yeah, go and bet 300 quid on Hamer. I said because he'll take that. Did he do it? Yeah, and he won. So. That, it's as obvious as day as night to me what was going to happen. Aimer's not a mug. He's not a mug. Price is building up. We all know Price has got a very bad confidence thing because he's been, to be honest with you, he's been, he's been managed terribly in the past. You know, he's been, he's been believing the hype rather than believing on his talent. He's a big puncher. I think he was, he wasn't out of condition what people said he was. He had nothing to do with it. He, he mentally started to dream when he couldn't get him out of there. And when Hamer kept coming, he, the doubts was creeping in second by second. So it was mental exhaustion again. It well, looked, looked like, I mean, in round five or round six when he knocked Hamer down, it looked like he, that was it. It was a foregone conclusion. He was going to get Hamer out of there. But do you think trying to get Hamer out of there was the wrong thing to do? The fact that it made him more vulnerable. What do you think? All of his strategies are wrong. His body weight was wrong. Um, too he, heavy. He's got, he's got, he's got for, um, he's got no ring craft. And what I mean by ring craft, he's got no, he's got no ring savvy. How to, how to, how to smother opponents, you know, take a breather. He, he's, he's under, it's like he's underwater when he boxes, because he's so fair and square. You know, he's not been learnt the proper tactics how to, how to, man his way around the ring. You know, there's a lot more to boxing as an art. And what we've seen is a prime example. Power alone doesn't cut it, does it? You need a lot more than that. Do you so, think we'll see him come back maybe twice? I don't know, but we've not seen anything new. You know, he's, he's coming back and he's having all these comebacks, but it's the same David Price. He's, he's, he's exactly the same to me as when he first started out as what he is today. He's no, he's no better and no worse. Interesting stuff. That's all I can say, I'm not being critical. I, he's, I'm, I believe he's a very nice guy, but you're asking me and I'm, I'm giving my opinion. Do you feel that the fact that he, he had them two Tony Thompson defeats, defeat to Irk and Tepa, who both went on to be proven to have taken the substance to help their, their strength, their power, whatever you want to say about him, do you think that robbed him of a big, big payday fight, a type of life-changing payday fight, in your opinion? Look, when you fight like an amateur, you're getting knocked out. You, you know, you're a big guy, you're coming in and out, your chin's up in the air, you're square on the ropes, you know, you're there to be, you're there to be whacked out. So 
that's what happens. You can't, you know, look, there's amateur boxing and there's pro boxing, isn't there? Mm. Well, we've got an amateur in the pro ranks and in the heavyweight division, you're getting your lights put out. Mm. So we have, that's what we've seen. I think he's, uh, but look, it's, it's what's happened. I wish him all the best. If he comes back, I'm sure there's good fights out there for him. He's got a family and kids to feed. But really, he, need, he really needs to learn the professional craft properly. Thoughts on Deontay Wilder v Gerald Washington? Is that a fight you have any interest in? Will you be watching that? Not really. I think they're going a lot about Wilder, but um, his, his choice of opponents, I'm not that impressed with. You know, he's always had soft touches, hasn't he? All the way through for some reason. You know, he's a big banger and this, that, and the other, but I don't think they're as confident as what they really think they are because we've got a 22 year old kid fighting a live opponent. You know, so we're taking it. So, you know, it's like the same old story. When you're carefully managed, there's a reason behind it. If you believe in your fighter, get in. Get in and have a fight. Get in the middle of the sea and swim out of it. Not in a swimming pool. So, that's what I see. I think Wilder can fight, he's dangerous. But, uh, like I said, he's not, I don't think he's getting many fans with the, the type of opponents he's picking. It's very common. That's what very I think. Common. I want to talk to you a little bit about Anthony Joshua and Vladimir Klitschko. That fight's made Anthony Joshua a chance to really stamp supremacy on the division, if you like. Yeah. He's going to, to look to make a real statement here. Firstly, what, what are your thoughts on that fight? I think it's a very exciting fight. It's a fight that I'm definitely going to be watching. I'm interested in it because you're, gonna, you're going to see uh, Joshua, I believe, come out and be the best he can be. I think he's determined, he's young, he knows if he can get it on Klitschko, he can hurt him. And when we all know when Klitschko gets hurt, he doesn't recover. You know, when he gets clipped, is he going to become 50 overnight? You know, so you've got the age factor, he's coming off a loss, he's uh, a little bit out of the ring, although I don't see that being uh, much of a thing. It just depends if the motivation's still there for Klitschko. Does he want it? Is he coming back for the payday? You know, all these things are playing a factor. But if we've got 100% Klitschko determined to bring his belts back, I think Joshua's going to have a problem. And Klitschko old man him off, in your opinion. We hear this a lot. Do you think Klitschko will have the ring craft, ring guile to control AJ over 12 rounds? Yeah, I think if he, I think if he wants it, he's, he's got the experience and uh, he's definitely an elite boxer, Klitschko. I think um, Joshua's never faced anything like Klitschko before in his career. So it's a big leap. It's a massive jump, actually. So, you know, I think if a determined Klitschko comes, you know, I've got to hedge towards Klitschko. If Joshua does beat Klitschko, will you gauge the response that he receives as to the response that Tyson Fury receives in Dustin Hoffman when he beat Klitschko? Is that something you will be aware of and consciously sort of, sort of take in, if you like? I don't really look at... Uh what people say in opinions and this and that. I think the, th the main thing is, look, Klitschko's got a good camp. He's training for this fight. So there's no excuses. It's a world title fight. But like I said, that bell could ring. We just don't know what type of Klitschko is going to come out. But whatever happens, Joshua needs to basically go, go at him gun-ho, doesn't he? Because he's got the youth, he's got the strength. You know, is that going to, is that going to be enough? And there's one thing for sure. Uh, Joshua, if he hits anybody, he's going he's gonna to severely hurt him. He is definitely a ferocious specimen of a man, Joshua, isn't he? Just yeah. looking at him, he looks so so well sort of put together. Such a strong man. Yeah, he's got, he's got awesome power, that's for sure. But so has a lot of other heavyweights. Frank Bruno had awesome power as well, didn't he? You know, we've got, um, you know, Wilder's got awesome power. Are we going to say they're the best thing ever? You know, George Foreman, you know, look what he done with Fraser, bounced him off the floor. He beat Ali, look what Ali done with Foreman. It's all irrelevant. There's one thing for sure, this is why boxing's an art and it's a skill. If he, if he catches anybody clean, they're out. He'll put you to sleep. That we know. I'm looking forward to seeing what 2017 brings us. As I said, we know Huey Fury's got a big, big fight coming up, so best of luck with that for him. And I hope Tyson Fury, we get to see him doing what we all want to see him do, which is back fighting, you know? Yeah, exactly. I think uh, he's what, it is what it is. Um, but they're going to be back. He'll be back. And uh, Yui Fury, we're on with him now. So uh, let's get him over the line. Be some achievement, 22 years of age, world champion. Second one in the family. Uh, 
and I'm slightly confident we'll get there. Peter Fury, thank you very much for coming to RFL TV. Always a great pleasure, sir. And you, James. And we'll catch you soon. Thank you, mate. Pleasure.